five, use valence bond theory to explain the bonding in O2. Sketch the overlap of the atomic orbitals involved in the bonds in O2. Okay, so we're going to be doing some sketching, love drawing. So let's see if, let's just see if my drawings are good, but I, I think I'm a pretty good drawer. Let's see. So the first thing that we have to do here is we just have to do a couple of, um, there's a couple of concepts that we need to know before we get into valence bond theory. So if you guys don't uh, know these, or if you're a little bit unfamiliar, you could always check back in the previous playlist to watch, you know, as many videos as you want. we got tons of videos on these things. The first thing we have to do is we have to basically find the Lewis structure for O2. And in order to talk about valence bond theory, I find it easiest explaining it when we do electron configuration. So we have to do, or at least talk about electron configuration because that will lead us to valence bond theory. So that's the two things, electron configuration of oxygen and the Lewis structure of O2. So let's just quickly do the electron configuration for oxygen, right? If we pull out that periodic table, you play like shoots and ladders, you go by number, right? So let's see if your electron configuration matches mine, but oxygens, is a 1s2, 2p, 2s2, 2p4. And from this, remember the biggest number in the front, right? The one is not the biggest number. Those are your valence electrons. So this is the orbital, right? The two number, but the amount of electrons in there is two plus four. So I have a total of Two plus four is six valence electrons. Now I only draw the electron configuration because um, this is going to help us when we have to sketch. So I like to reference back the electron configuration. So we'll get to that in two seconds. But for now, I'm just going to use my six valence electrons and draw what O2 is in a Lewis structure. So I have oxygen and another oxygen, right? And I have six valence for each. So maybe I'll do one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I make a single bond first. Just make sure that everything is all good if they have the octet. But oxygen has seven valence electrons now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I just need to make that double bond. And now they all have eight valence electrons. So we're working with a double bond here. So we have to sketch what a double bond looks like. Now, just know that if you have a double bond, there are specific bonds that are in a double bond. Now, there's only two types. There's sigma bonds and there's pi bonds. Just know that every covalent bond, I don't care whether it's a single bond, a double bond, or a triple bond, you gotta have the framework. And the framework is the sigma bond. So a double bond has to have a sigma. That's this little sig signal here, right? This is a sigma bond. So it has one of them. You're only allowed to have one per bond. And then the rest of them are pi bonds. So I'll have one sigma bond that I have to draw, and I have to draw one pi bond. All right, so let's get down to business. So this is just really important to know, especially when a question asks, uh, you know, they give you a structure and they say, how many sigma bonds, how many pi bonds? You just have to draw the structure and just break up the bonds. So just know that every double bond is one sigma, one pi. So now let's draw it out. So instead, I'm just going to put now dots for oxygen. So I have oxygen here and oxygen here. These represent the nucleus. And remember, the electrons are outside the nucleus. So that's why we draw these sketches with things coming out of the nucleus. Okay, so we have oxygen and oxygen. Now, when we talk about valence bond theory, we don't talk about uh, Lewis structures because we don't, or we're not sketching any overlap. That's a valence bond theory we draw in terms of an overlap, overlap of orbitals, right? And it's because of those electrons in the orbitals, since they overlap, that's what makes the bond. So we have to start from the framework. 
And the strongest type of bond between two oxygens is right when you you know, interconnect the two nuclei together right where they're at, right? You don't want to go above. That would be, that wouldn't be the strongest bond. You wouldn't want to go below. This is the strongest bond. And that is your sigma bond. So we have to say to ourselves, well, what type of drawing are we going to draw? You always draw the one that is unfilled. So that's why I just go back to electron configuration, because in our valence electrons, even though we have a total of six, the S orbital is already filled. So I'm not going to draw it as an S, but these P's, they're unfilled. So I'm going to draw it as a P orbital, and the P orbital always looks like those dumbbells, right? So here we go. I'm going to draw it in the kind of like the, the straight direction, and maybe I'll make this even... I'll emphasize this even more. I think that I like that better. So here's one of them. And I'll just draw the outline just to show you that, okay, this is, this is one oxygens. And if you draw a big dumbbell on the right side, the other one just has to be a little smaller and facing the opposite way. This shows us that there's no electron in this side of the dumbbell, the P orbital. The one that's larger is always going to be the one that has the electron. So I'm going to just, whoop, I'm just going to draw that green. And then I'm going to place my one electron here. Maybe I'll just draw it down here for this oxygen. So I have like a P orbital. Now I just have to do it again for the other oxygen. So let's see, I'm going to draw it big. That was good. Now, now I'm just trying to get it, you know, as nice as possible. So there we go. Eh. That's better. Okay. And then I have to draw the other one on the other side. That's good enough. Let's just outline. And as you can see, these are basically in the framework, right? They're they're basically on the same line as the nucleus. Here's the other oxygens, one electron. And as you can see, it's like a kind of like a Venn diagram. This is where they're sharing. These are where the, the, um, the orbitals overlap. Okay. So that, I mean, this should have been, now I'm just being a little picky, right? So it should have been kind of like that, just to kind of show that, you know, it's all about symmetry, something like this. Okay. That takes care of the sigma bond. That takes care of only one of the bonds because the one bond has the two electrons and I only drew the two electrons here. So now I have to draw the other bond and the other bond comes from the pi bond and the pi bond, it's not the structure, right? So it has to be the ones that are less strong. Those are the ones that go above and below. So now we're going to be even more fancy. Let's see. I could technically, you know, choose my colors, but I'll keep it with, um, I'll keep it with the, the, the green and the blue. Let's uh, pretend that the electrons are going to bind at the top, right? So I'm going to draw a P orbital. So I'll draw it. I'll draw this one before it binds just to show you. So I have a P like this, right? And they both have to be going the same exact way to get that bond, that bond. So the small ones are going to be on the bottom. I'll just draw these. And I have the one electron here and the one electron here. Well, now how am I going to show that these bind? Well, they basically will kind of like open up. And these will kind of open up. And what happens is they form a connection. So now you're talking about one, and they want it to be an overlap, but I'd like to just connect them. So, so maybe we'll just show the connection, right? Whee! There you go, because that's, that's better to draw. And then for the blue on the bottom, you just do the same exact thing. And as you see, as you add more bonds, it's going to get so complicated.
And, and maybe what I'll do is I'll just, let's color this in. This is now your other P. And as you can see, the, the pi orbital basically protects the sigma bond. So if you're ever going to break one of these bonds, the first one you're going to break is the, uh, the pi bond. So the sigma bond is always the strongest one. And, you know, maybe we'll, if you want to show it kind of like this, I guess, right? Because they did say show the overlap. So maybe something like this and then just kind of, but I mean, I like to just draw it as like one whole thing. It's kind of easier to understand, but it doesn't really matter. There we go. And if we're drawing the overlap, I'm just going to get rid of that. Maybe add it a little. Oh, boy. <laughs> we're going to add it over here. And the two electrons are over here. One, two. One from the one oxygen and the other one from the other oxygen. And that's kind of your P orbital. So you have basically two P's. Right? You have a P and then another P being represented. No S orbitals here because they're all filled. And that's the drawing. So, I mean, generally I would just hook these up just like I said and just put the electrons here and call it a day. But, I mean, since they said overlap, I'll just, you know, overlap them. But the idea is kind of the same. All right. Um, what'd you think? I hope this, this works. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And I hope you're all having a great day out there. Let's keep working hard. Keep studying. And... We'll be here every step of the way, all right? So I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.